Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Eniola and I work as a machine learning engineer at Google Canada. And in today's video, I'll be sharing how I prepared for the interview and the resources I found helpful during this process. So if you'd like to learn more, do keep on watching. So before we start the video, I would just like to say everything I talk about in this video is my own personal experience and I also acknowledge that what worked for me may not necessarily work for every other person but I do hope it's useful for someone. So let's get right into the video. So the first step was actually submitting an application. So back in 2019, I had applied and interviewed at Google but unfortunately, I did not make it past the on-site stage. So I decided to wait another year gain more experience and then reapply and so this year i set up a notification on the google career website where i put in the types of roles i was interested in interviewing for and the locations that i would love to work and so when one of such roles came up i got the email notification and i saw it was a perfect fit for me and i reached out to a recruiter saying um, I would love to apply and we got on a call, um, went over my resume and we set up dates to do the interview. And so to prepare for the interview, I covered three main areas. The first is uh, data structures and algorithms. The second is um, machine learning knowledge. And the third is behavioral. On the data structure side, I studied up on the common data structures like arrays, heaps, stacks, queues, linked lists, uh, trees, tries, graphs, and just made sure I understood all of these um, data structures. I knew how to write them up in code from scratch. I also knew what kind of algorithms went along with them and the different traders of these data structures. So once I was done with the data structures, I moved on to algorithms. And so on the algorithm side, I studied up on the common algorithms like divide and conquer, search, binary search, dynamic programming, memoization, um, greedy algorithms, recursion. So I made sure to understand all of these algorithms. I made sure to know their various time and space complexities and also know when and how to use them and also how to optimize them. So once I was done studying up on the basic um, data structures and algorithms, I then moved on to actually solving problems. And so to solve the coding problems, I used resources like Cracking the Coding Interview. So for Cracking the Coding Interview, I went um, chapter by chapter, reading through each data structure or algorithm, solving um, like the first few questions for maybe like five to 10 minutes on paper. And then once I solved the questions, I looked at the back of the textbook to see the solution and then re-implemented that solution in my own words on paper and then added that solution in my Python compiler just to make sure like there are no uh, syntax errors. So I did this for all of the chapters in the book. And then once I felt like I was a bit comfortable with solving problems, I then moved on to this other course called Grokking the Coding Interview. So Grokking the Coding Interview is amazing. So basically it's, it's a course that teaches you patterns that could be used to solve common coding problems. And so because of the nature of coding problems, um, there, there are some tricks uh, to, to solve them. So this course just teaches you all of those patterns and all of those tricks like, that one could use to see a problem and then see how to use a specific data structure, an algorithm and the pattern in solving that problem. So once I was done with that and I was a bit more confident in my data structures and algorithm skill, I then moved on to Liquid. So Liquid is this popular um, platform with tons and tons of questions ordered by a company that asks those questions, ordered by their difficulty, easy, hard, or medium. And so for these, I just picked questions based on maybe a data structure and algorithm I was weak on, practiced um, some questions, and I looked at the optimal solution to see what's the difference between my own solution, and, and then practiced more to make sure I understood how to solve these problems efficiently. 
So once I was also comfortable with lead code, I was comfortable with most of the these coding problems, I then moved on to mock interview. So mock interview is super, super helpful for me. So I use this website called Pramp. So Pramp basically pairs you up with another person and you, both of you act as an interviewer and an interviewee. So this is a perfect because it simulates the interview process in like in a low stakes environment. So rather than going into like my, my real interview um, without having had that contact with another person, I could use Pramp to just practice as many times as I wanted and go through the mock interview process and gain more confidence and also build my communication skills for the eventual interview day. Once I was done with the data structures and algorithms part, I moved on to the second part of my preparation, which is the machine learning knowledge. So under machine learning, I covered three main topics. The first is general ML knowledge. The second is natural language processing, which is my specific um, area of expertise. And the third is uh, machine learning systems design. So for the general ML knowledge, I made sure to brush up or refresh my knowledge on common machine learning concepts like supervised and unsupervised learning, um, boosting, gradient descent, regularization, normalization, um, loss function. And I also made sure to brush up on the common classical ML algorithms like uh, linear regression, logistic regression, support vector machines, PCA, uh, K-nearest neighbors, K-means. And I not only brushed up on these algorithms, I also made sure I uh, was able to write them from scratch using just Python and the NumPy arrays and also made sure to know what are the pros and cons of the various algorithms and when and where to use them um, when solving problems. And to prepare for this, I use this amazing study guide based on the CS229 Stanford course and this covers all of these topics in a very compact way. And so once I brushed up on my ML um, fundamental knowledge, I then moved on to my natural language processing knowledge. So and for this, I had to brush up on like the various NLP concepts like embeddings, um, attention networks, recurrent networks, bidirectional models, uh, machine translation, engram models, uh, most of the basic on the fundamental things in the natural language processing space and to uh, brush up on this. I also use another study guide based on the CS uh, 230 um, Stanford course. And so after brushing up on my NLP knowledge, I then moved on to studying for the systems design interview. And so for the system design interview, I needed to synthesize my experience and my knowledge in ML um, in order to design a solution uh, for a large scale system. And so for these, I, I used the machine learning system design course by Educative. And so what this course helped me to do was to come up with a structured way of formulating a problem into an ML problem, um, understanding and ident identifying the various um, scale and latency requirements, and then also be able to discuss the trade-offs of my design solutions. And for the behavioral part of the process, so Google typically looks for something they call Googliness in candidates. So Googliness is basically um, how you how you lead, how you work as an individual and in a team, um, how you navigate ambiguous situations and problems, how you help other people um, on your team or even outside your team, or how you push yourself to go out of your comfort zone. And so looking at these attributes, I reflected back on my own ex work experience and I listed out about 10 scenarios where I felt I displayed this um, attributes and then I made sure to frame them in a structured format that follows um, what the situation was, what the problem was, what my solution was, what the impact was and what lessons I learned um, from that um, scenario. And so once I had this down, I felt prepared for the behavioral part of the interview. And lastly, the most important thing that helped me during this process was just basically just believing in um, believing in my skills, believing in my experience, believing in my talent, and then also um, trusting the work I had put into the process. And I think this helped me be confident and be myself during the actual interview and, well, uh, the rest is history. And so if you like this video, please, please, please 
like share subscribe comment forward to your friends they really do help me and encourage me to make more videos so thank you so much and see you some other time bye